the northwestern states of the nation are bounded by the middle states the southwest the far west and the canadian provinces of british columbia alberta saskatchewan and manitoba majestic peaks and ranges of the rocky mountains stud the western plateau except for an eastern fringe this region is more than two thousand feet above sea level and large areas are above five thousand in the northwest rainfall is a major concern this shaded area receives on the average less than sixteen inches annually of the seven drainage areas the missouri river basin is the largest the native animal and plant life is varied on the plains short prairie grass cottonwood trees and prairie dogs then on the higher plateau sagebrush and in the mountains pine forests bears and other large game animals the northwest was settled after 1850 largely by homesteaders from the middle states the other regions in canada gave lesser numbers foreign countries contributed many immigrants especially germany russia norway and sweden all were attracted by the free land this, our last frontier, is in fact the land of the wide open spaces. Each symbol represents about half a million people. The rural population far exceeds the urban. In these nine large states, there are only five cities of more than 100,000. Omaha, Kansas City, Wichita, Denver, and Salt Lake City. These are important jobbing and wholesale centers. Summer tourist and vacation travel to the scenic spots of the Northwest bring millions of people each year. To Glacier Park with its glistening glacier-fed lakes. To Yellowstone Park with its steaming geysers of varied forms and moods to the Grand Teton Mountains rising in alpine majesty from the plateau, to the Angler's Paradise along snow-fed mountain streams where many varieties of trout are plentiful, to the numerous dude ranches where city folks from the east can relive the romance of the west. The Northwest is spanned by improved highways connecting east with west, north with south, and skirting the national parks. Several transcontinental railroads cross the Northwest to reach the Pacific Coast, carrying articles of commerce and people. Transcontinental airlines span the region. Because of the vast distances, air travel is becoming increasingly important in the Northwest. The Northwest was early frequented by prospectors. Even today, gold is an important resource of the region especially in South Dakota, Colorado, and Utah. Three-fourths of the nation's silver comes from Idaho, Utah, Colorado, and Montana. The Northwest extracts about half of the lead produced in the United States. Utah and Montana produce about half of the nation's copper. This copper mine indicates the magnitude of these mining operations. Although petroleum production is only a fraction of the nation's output, its money return to these states is important. Bituminous coal and lignite beds underlie much of the region. These coal cars represent the relative coal production by states. Large tracts in the mountain areas are covered with virgin forests. Much of it is now conserved within national forests and is lumbered under strict regulations. In Idaho is located the largest white pine forest in the world. Many men are employed in the felling, the trucking, and sawing the white pine logs into lumber. 
The boards are sorted and piled high for drying. The soil, the leading resource in the Northwest, was first exploited by the range cattle industry. Even today, the farms and ranches of this region supply nearly a third of our beef cattle. Some of the cattle are shipped to meat packing centers within the region, but a great number go to the middle states, particularly Chicago, St. Paul, and St. Louis. The dressed beef is distributed throughout the United States and Europe. The Northwest raises a third of the nation's sheep and lambs. Sheep are raised extensively on the plateaus between mountain ranges. The region produces more than a third of the nation's wool. Lambs by thousands are shipped to packing centers. Wheat is the most important cash crop. A third of the nation's winter wheat is grown in the region centered around Kansas. More than three-fourths of the spring wheat is supplied by the area centered in North Dakota. Today, wheat is raised on large farms and virtually every operation in the production of wheat is performed by power machinery, plowing, seeding, and harvesting whether by combine or by binder and threshing machine. The wheat, after it has been separated from the chaff, is hauled by truck to the local grain elevator and from there shipped by railroad to the flour mills. Some wheat goes to small mills located in the region, but the bulk goes by rail to Minneapolis or by boat to Buffalo and there is ground into flour. The flour is distributed to all the regions of the United States and Europe. The Great Corn Belt extends over into Nebraska, South Dakota, and Kansas. The corn fields of Nebraska are both extensive and productive. Much corn is harvested green as fodder or cut into ensilage and blown into silos as winter feed for cattle. The Northwest produces nearly half of the nation's rye, used largely in the making of rye bread. Flax is another important crop. It is raised for the seed, which yields linseed oil for use in paints. The Northwestern states produce a great amount of hay. Some of it is baled and shipped to other regions. Much of the cultivated land receives only from 8 to 20 inches of rainfall annually. Therefore, much of the agriculture is by dry farming. The land lies fallow every other year and is cultivated frequently to conserve moisture for the next year's crop. In the plateau areas of the Northwest, the federal government has developed numerous irrigation projects. Some of this irrigated land is used for orchards, but most of it is devoted to the raising of sugar beets. On the Great Plains, the trading centers are towns and villages. Most obvious from a distance are the grain elevators. Coming closer, one sees the livestock shipping pens. On Saturday evenings, Main Street swarms with farmers doing their weekly shopping. The public school is the principal institution in the Plains town. The leading institutions of higher education in each state are the State University and the State Agricultural College. The Northwestern states must receive from other regions all kinds of manufactured goods, farm machinery, tools, ready-made clothing, together with nearly all fruits and vegetables. The Northwest gives to the nation and the world a vast surplus of food products. It produces a great surplus of beef cattle and sheep. 
it is preeminent in the production of barley rye and wheat the broad fertile plains of the northwest have appropriately been called the breadbasket of the nation